If you're relatively new to Bubble, you might be asking yourself, what on earth is an alert element? Great question. I remember when I first got started in Bubble, it took me a couple of months to actually get my head around alerts and understand what they were actually useful for. Well, in this video, you're gonna learn everything there is to know about alert elements. You'll learn what they're used for, when they should be used, how to design them and build out the workflows to power them, and finally, how you can customize alerts to display different messages. Look, thankfully, this one is a relatively straightforward process, so I'm gonna hand this one over to Luca, and he's gonna cover everything you need to know. Hello, today we're gonna to be going over quickly how to build in alerts into your global application and then how to actually build in alerts which changes the alert message based on what you're updating within your application. So all an alert is basically is a temporary message that pops up after it fades in, it holds and then it fades out. Usually alerts are actually used for when something has been changed within your bubble application, but maybe that change isn't necessarily as visible. So you give them a visual cue just to tell them that something has been updated within that bubble application. To give you an example of this, I've just built out a little user account. And as you can see, when we press our update button, we get our alert fading in and then fading out. Let's jump over into our bubble application so we can show you how to do that. So if we go to our bubble editor here, as you can see on the page, we have a alert. Now this alert can be placed anywhere you want on the page. And if you click this checkbox here, you can see that the position of the alert will always be at the top of the page. Now, if you wanted to put the alert somewhere else, you would have this unchecked and then place it anywhere you would want the alert to come up on the page. Uh, but it's standard UI design to have the alert come onto the top of the page. So I'm just going to like, keep this checked. So let's get into building out our alert message. So first of all, I'll delete the ones that we have created for, and then we can get started. So what we're going to want to do is go over to our visual elements field here and scroll down to our alerts here. Now we're just going to place it anywhere on the page. And we're going to click and update our text within this alert and just set this as update. Now, what we're going to do is check this box here because that will mean it will always be at the top of the page. No matter where you put it on your page, it just makes sure that it comes up and it fades in and fades out from the top, which is standard UI design. So I'm just going to click that one there. If you wanted it to appear anywhere else on the page, you would uncheck that and then place it in the position that you would want the alert to be. But as I said, because having the alert message at the top is standard UI design, I'm going to leave it there. So if we go over to our layout tab here and we uncheck make this element fixed width, it will expand to the full length of our page. And that's exactly how I want my alert message to look. Just gonna quickly go over to here. I'm gonna make our alert message nice and green to say it's a success. So we're gonna go over to here onto the text. I'm gonna click green rather than choose a dark green because I'm gonna set our background style to be a light green by just clicking the green and then setting our opacity to 20. Perfect. And if we scroll down to the border, I'm just gonna take our border off. Lovely. So now we're going to want to go and attach a workflow to this alert to make sure that it appears when we want it to appear. So I'm going to go on to our update button over here, right click and click the start slash edit workflow. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an action into this button. If we type in alert, you can see there's this action called show message in an alert box. We're going to click that. And because we've only got one alert on the page, it has automatically format added to the alert, which is perfect. Now, if you wanted to change the length or duration of how long this message came up for, we can basically change these numbers in milliseconds here. So at the moment, it's fading in for half a second, 
holding for two seconds and fading out for half a second as well. So just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to change this to a second because maybe that's too long. So if we check out up here and preview our application, you can see when this button is pressed, our alert message comes up and then fades out. And because we've changed the milliseconds of the hold, it's now there for half the amount of time it was before. So how would we actually get this alert message to change its message based on which input value had been changed, either the password or the name? Let's jump over into our bubble editor to show you how to do that. So what we're going to want to actually do here is move our show message in an alert update to before we've updated the current user. And that's because we're going to see the difference within the input for, let's say, the name and the current user's name. Because if someone's updated the name and then is clicking this button, we're going to want to be able to differentiate between the current user and the updated input. So it sounds complicated, but I'll show you how that works in a second. What we're going to want to do here is actually click change the alert message. And we're going to have this message come up when we've updated just the name. So if you update it, do name updated. Perfect. Now, here I will show you exactly what I was talking about before in terms of having inputs and it being different to what the current user's value is. So. For example, we only want the message in this alert to come up when the input for the name value is not the current user's name. So when this condition is true, a user has gone onto their user page, edited their name and clicked update. But if we were to have this action after make changes to the current user, this condition wouldn't actually be true so we wouldn't be able to differentiate but if when we do it before it's before the input value is updating the current user so then it's fine so if it's just the name we're going to want to do this and for the input pass oh, for the input passwords value this is going to be the same as the current user's password. Ergo, the password hasn't been updated. What we want to do now is just fill out all our other alert messages that are possible. So if we're going to copy, we're going to paste. This one is going to be password updated. And so it's the opposite to what we did before. So the input signups name is going to be the same as the current user's name because in this condition, we're not, we're only updating the password and the input passwords value is not the current user's password. Now we're going to do the condition where we've updated the name and the password. So in this scenario the input values will both be different to the values stored in the current user so do is not is not name this so you might be wondering how we're actually pulling these input values and if we go onto our design tab you can see that i've got the initial content to be the current user's name for the input and the initial content for the passwords input to be the current user's password. And the initial content basically is what is outputted in these inputs before they are edited or gone into and changed basically. So that's how we're drawing those values within our only when conditions here. So if we are to preview that now, and uh, we change the name, you can see the name has been updated. If we are to change the name and we're going to change the password, the name and password have been updated. And if we are to change just the password, 
you can see the password has been updated. And that's a nice little bit of customization to really upgrade your UI experience for your users. And just like that, you now know everything about using alert elements inside a bubble. In my opinion, alerts are almost essential for any application as they just help create a better end user experience. Look, if you found this video useful and you wanted to stay up to date with any additional tutorials I share, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop a new video. In the meantime though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.